experiment four. Okay, right. So you guys already have a look at it. So you need to work out your volume rate for cooling, the volume rate for your hot. And once you have determined that, limit that by measuring the volume and then stopwatch and then you basically get your volume rate. Now we can actually start with the actual method. Now the experiment is basically 25 degrees and 35 degrees and you vary your flow rate at your cold. At that time, so you let it stabilize and then get your readings. You need to read in the bottom and read in the top. I'll show you when, when we get to the experiment. After you're done with 35 degrees, you change it to 45, you do three readings there again at different flow rates and again at 55. Any questions? Alright guys, then go to your stations and we will start working in, at, at that point. Characteristic of a pump calf experiment. Pressure and flow are read for this experiment. The purpose of this experiment is to understand how a centrifugal pump operates. Yeah, we have a variable speed controller. Um, this is a centrifugal pump on its own. Then on this side, we have a suction pressure. This one is a discharge pressure. The objective is to investigate pump calves at constant speed controlled by a variable speed controller. The operator needs to monitor suction pressure, discharge pressure, and flow rate. The most important here is to make sure that that pressure never exceeds. From the data, the operator will have calculated the efficiency of the pump in this specific system. And that will be our starting pressure, okay? What if you're a tractometer, okay? We're going to hold it on the side and we're going to measure the infrared, right? And measure infrared measurements. Okay. And if you're going to recall that, the best press memory, all right? Two, three, five, eight. And you will see the maximum is 2,900. So at that RPMs, that's the value you're going to write down. In this experiment, you will learn the importance of mixing two immiscible liquids. We first start by putting it in this organic phase of oil and then we will start. The purpose of mixing is to provide the process technology student with practical experience on liquid-liquid mixing, suspension and emulsification processes. is to highlight the main aspect governing the process efficiency, namely the influence of the operating parameters and the effect of the propeller type. A heat exchanger in which heat exchange takes place between two fluids that enter and exit at different temperatures. Um, this is the heat exchanger, that's a shelf and shelf heat exchanger. So it is basically an equipment or a device that um, transfers heat from one medium to another at different temperatures, where like, those mediums have different temperatures. On this experiment, we have a, a, cold, a cold hot water tank and the hot water tank. So first of all, before we start the experiment, we have to first measure the volumes of both waters. So in order to measure the volumes, we have to dip stick. Use the dip stick. And then after using a dip stick, we then use a tape measure. So we measure the height of the water. So after measuring the height of the water, we then go up because we want the volume. So the volume volume of a cylinder is actually pi r squared h. So we have to measure the diameter of the volume. So of the tank. So, so after measuring the diameter of the tank, since the time we can see that the, the tank has a the thickness of the wall. 
So we have to also measure the thickness of the wall of the tank so that we have the inner diameter. And then after that, we divide the diameter by two to find the radius. The main function of the heat exchanger is to either remove heat from a hot fluid or to add heat to cold fluid. The objective is to test and calculate different heat capacities at different flow rates and temperatures to be able to calculate the inner tube length and surface of heat exchange. pH measurement experiment. The purpose of this experiment is to provide students with knowledge and skills on how to handle biocorrosive materials. The objectives are that the students show the correct handling procedures of bulk materials like corrosive acids, monitor and read pH readings, and then use the data in data handling. Uh, how we did that with volume calculation, we said pi r squared times the height and r was half of the diameter that we measured and the height was from point A to B which was about 29. So as we measured that we found that it was about 5.2 liters that we needed to fill the machine in. Distillation processes. The purpose of distillation is to purify compounds by separating the compounds from a non-volatile or less volatile material. Secondly, to separate a mixture of two miscible liquids with different boiling points. To measure the temperatures in the column, we have various thermocouples at each point in the column. The job of a thermocouple is to relay the temperature to the controller and we can also see how the temperature fluctuates going up in the column. This is an example of a thermocouple. A thermocouple works on the principle of two different metals causing a voltage fluctuation if there is a change in temperature. Before we start operating a distillation column, we need to ensure that we have the correct PPE, namely safety glasses and gloves. I'm now going to open the bottom and for the purpose of this experiment, I'm going to add one liter of water that we are going to distill. Before we start the distillation column, there are a few things that we need to ensure. Firstly, we need to ensure that all the taps on the column are closed properly, as well as any outlets that the column has. We also need to ensure that the cooling tower is activated and we need to adjust the flow rate accordingly. Once the controller has been activated, we need to start our distillation and put in all of the values that we need for this experiment. Good morning everyone, thank you for the session, um, OPS class, and we have set up a scenario for you to basically come as a group to discuss to what is happening regarding troubleshooting. The scenario what you need to discuss today is a cyanide spill. Now where did it happen? Just outside Joburg, a trucker um, turned it over and there's a large spill on the ground. Now you need to come as a team and actually neutralize, remove the spill and then clean up. Uh, good morning everyone. I'm the supervisor of the removal team. So 
12 minutes after the six in, uh, after the incident, I uh, got a call from the neutralizing team, from the supervisor of the neutralizing team about the incident. So the supervisor is informing me that there has been a spill and how much it affected the area, how much the spill is. So we, we like the, the, the supervisor of the neutralizing team is trying to inform me about the spill and where it occurred. Good morning guys, um, good morning Mr. Khalos, good morning Mr. Khed. Um, today guys, I will be the operator of the, of the scenario. First thing before I start, can I ask whoever has the mic, Rahiso, when dealing with any situation where we are in this environment of industry, what's the number one rule? Number one rule is safety. Let's make sure we're on the same page. Is it possible that for, for the operators working with the neutralizing substance to share the standby operator outside of the scene. Because as uh, the other speaker said that they're wearing a full body suit. The full body suit doesn't necessarily impede their hearing. They can still hear, but it may be less. That's why I said they can make physical signs since it's not 50 meters may not be that much or that so that you can't see the person actually. So it's either you're making a physical sign so that something to show them that there's danger or there's something so then they have to evacuate. It's not as much as hearing them. If they can't hear him, they, they can see him, obviously. 